Thank you so much. Um, I'll be very fast. So I know I'm talking about government contracting, but I really want to start with what um, the great uh, Wayne Dyer said. He said that if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I want that to really just kind of sink in a little bit. Because right now, as we're in here, oh my gosh, I see so many contracts. <laughs> this right here is a government contract. Those chairs we're sitting on cleaning, the water we're drinking, those are all opportunities for government contracting. So if we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So, I'll go back a little bit. <laughs> About 10 years ago, uh, my life changed. My life changed for two reasons. I got a job that was life-changing because of where I was coming from in terms of the job I was doing then, but it also exposed me to a world that I had no idea existed, had absolutely no idea this was a thing. And um, so the company that hired me had a government contract with the DOD, the Department of Defense. So here I am, excited. Oh my gosh, I got this job. So that's all I could focus on. That's all I was seeing, the job. I couldn't see anything else because it was like, oh my gosh, God has done it. I've been praying and fasting. He has answered my prayer. I got this job. Two things happened. I relocated, actually I was in Texas at that time, in Dallas, Texas relocated to Kentucky, drove my car for 13 hours, had no idea, I didn't know anybody, but I just knew I had that job. But won't he do it? Yeah. This is what then happens. I get there, <laughs> trust me, I had no idea what government contracting was. I had no idea. So I get there, a couple of things happen kind of right away, within the first six months. Two of my colleagues, um, one was a white male, there's a reason I'm mentioning this. The other one was an um, Indian male. They invited me to dinner. They said, hey, Ma, we want to invite you to a business meeting. Fancy business meeting. I mean, this fish was like $200. But again, I'm just excited and grateful I got this job, so I have no idea what's happening. And they tell me, oh, you know, we have this partnership. We have a company. We bid for government contracts. I didn't even understand what that was. So they were proposing for me to be a partner, right? Stay with me, this is very significant. They were, uh, so they wanted me to be a partner and I said, oh, okay. And another thing happened. As I was starting to do my job, I was starting to get access at some reports because I had, had to have security clearance to get this job, which I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> but anyway, I started viewing these reports and I started noticing some stuff. There's hundreds of millions of dollars for government contracts, for government procurement. And something very specific. They were set aside for specific groups of people. <laughs> so remember those dinners? Remember why they were asking me to go? I'm a woman. I'm a black woman, which is a minority. Did you know that would be powerful? I'm coming from the corporate space. I didn't know that to be a powerful thing. That's why they wanted me to be a partner because then they could bid for very specific contracts because now I'm part of their business as a woman and as a minority woman because the government put it into law. They're set aside for specific groups so they could level the playing field. Because think about this for a moment. Boeing, Amazon, Microsoft, Deloitte, those are very um, successful companies in the private sector. Why do they have government contracts? Why? Because this is almost a guaranteed source of income, stream of income. Because when we have recessions, guess what's going up? Government contracts, they fit back into the economy. Are you hearing me? <laughs> I get so excited about the subject, sometimes I feel like I'm all over, so I wanna just check in and make sure you're following me here. So what is government contracting, right? So on a high level, this is pretty much doing business with the government. The government becomes your customer. The government becomes your client. So let me ask you here, because I, I believe we have small business owners or entrepreneurs 
Yes, yes? Yes. yes. What is one of those pain points in your business? Customers having that consistent income, that income that comes in. So imagine this customer who shows up with the money all the time, who is coming back. That could be the government. That could be your customer. And one of the things about um, government contracting when it comes to the United States, it's the world's largest, it's the world's largest buyer. Let me give you numbers. So 23% of what um, the government, okay, so let me, let me take a step back. If you've been paying attention, we know that there was a big bill that was passed. The infrastructure bill by the Biden-Harris, yeah? Hundreds of billions of dollars. 23% of that, by law, is for small business owners. Because again, they wanna level the playing field. So some of those numbers that I was seeing was money that was not claimed. Nobody had bid for it, or it ended up being transferred to the Amazons, to the bigger companies. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, what? What is this? I got so excited and I was like screaming from the rooftop, trying to tell everybody, go bid, go bid. But what I also discovered is there's got to be some sort of structure. It's a complicated thing, but it can, okay. So it's simple, but it's not easy, yes. right? So it's really being owning that you're a business owner. And as business owner, you do the work. You show up and do the work. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. You do the work. If you can learn things in your own work for whoever you're working for, you can totally do it for your business. Right. Like my friend says, mind your business, right? Go in and show up and do it. So what I, wanna, what I really wanted to say and is to let you know that there are contracts out there. And the government buys everything. <laughs> Let me give you examples. Dry cleaning. So we have a friend who won. If, if you know Grady Hospital, it's a, it's a hospital in Atlanta. So anything that is quasi-government, the state government, anything that gets some sort of money from the government, possibly will have some sort of contracts, right? So just think hospitals, schools. <sighs> so you, Think of this, remember I told you, if you change um, the way you look at things, the things you look at change? Don't judge me, I was at a funeral. We went to the cemetery, you know? My friend's brother had passed, we were at the cemetery and the burial is going on. I could see contracts. Those people that clean, those pop, those are contracts. So when I say contracts are everywhere, I'll be like driving, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a contract. That is the truth. So you and I can get a contract, and we have that amount that's already set aside. So those are typically 250,000 and less, right? Now that doesn't mean you cannot bid for the 1.5 or the millions of dollars. My business partner is here, and there was just a 1.5 million contract one on the state level with Washington State. So those things are possible as well. Am I, with, are you, am I losing you? Are we together? <laughs> Okay, so, because um, I don't have anything prepared, this is coming from my head. So, okay, what do they buy? So think of, um, there's the federal level, right? So you can bid on a federal level, right? You can bid on a state level, the state of Texas. Right now, if you go in the state of Texas and say doing business with government on the website, or say procurement, I guarantee you something is going to come up. In your county, Collin County, Tarrant County, Dallas County, Google that, something will come up. Those are the contracts that they have. Now when it comes to a county level, to a state level, to a municipal level, the parks and recreations, it's a money thing now. It depends if, you know, like Collin County is a wealthy county, so they're probably gonna have more, more contracts out there than another county that might not be as, as wealthy, if you will. So, so you're able to figure out, you know, to have, they have, um, so examples, let me go back to the examples, cleaning. So the airport is part of the Department of Transportation. You see those people cleaning, janitorial? Those are government contracts. Because the government, once it passes this bill, for instance, the one we just talked about, it now goes to the different states, the different agencies then the contracting officer has to now contract them because they cannot 
capacity. They don't have the capability to go out and fix the road and clean the airport. So now they engage the businesses. That's how you now go and bid for those contracts. That's how you now come into the picture. That's how you now come into the equation, so to speak. So you now bid for those different contracts at different levels. There are people that have, have contracts for pencils, supplying pencils to schools, supplying books to schools, right? Doing dry cleaning. Oh, going back to the Grady, he won the contract. He's never been to the dry cleaner or the hospital. Because what he did, he became the middleman. Won the contract, Googled, found the best dry cleaner that had all these reviews, went, because remember that dry cleaner wants a customer. They don't care what, where it's coming from. When he negotiated his um, deal with the dry cleaner, they go to Grady, pick up the sheets and stuff, because the hospital is not able to clean everything. And he's just getting the money and doing it that way. That's one opportunity, right? So there's so many different opportunities out there. So what are you good at doing? Remember what Pastor Montgomery was talking about yesterday. That trade, huh? What are you already doing? You could get a contract with the government with exactly that. What are you already doing or what are you seeing? Because if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. So what are you seeing? What are you already doing? What are you already proficient? We all can do something. Obviously, we're here. We can do something. And the fact that you're here, it means you're hungry for something. So what is it that you're becoming? Like John Maxwell says, if you're not growing, you're dying. So what are we doing? And I'm a big proponent of action because we don't want to be talking about this all day. Next week, we're talking about this. Nick, no, we got to start doing. So let's start having the conversations. Because one of the big things with government contracting is collaborating. You can win a contract that requires five consultants, one financial, one whatever. You're already networking, so then I would call and say, oh, I want data, I want whatever, right? And then you bring a team together and you go get the contract. That's, there's an opportunity here, let's penetrate and, and do big things. <laughs> Thank you.